so uh, let's turn this around how can I turn this around okay here I am <laughs> I'm wearing my hat it says El Catillero that means the assassin or uh, the machine gunner and I got it from a Mexican actor who played in many uh, action movies but I'm wearing it because I'm gonna machine gun some truth on here uh, I know it's Facebook so many um, need to be eased in a little, little bit, right? But um, I noticed that a lot of people, uh, after everything I've done, uh, all the videos I made and the posts, a lot of people still can see it, and uh, I don't know if they ever will. But um, I'm talking to Christians who really have a love for the truth. And having a love for the truth doesn't mean you don't have any fear of examining things. Right, but this, this church spirit has brought Christians in the spirit of fear uh, that they don't even want to look if they are right or wrong. Right? They don't want to be Bereans. They claim that they want to be Bereans, but they really don't want to be Bereans. Right? But if you look around and you look at uh, the world, especially the Western world, you see that it is being destroyed. But even the very word world is most misunderstood by Christians. Because this word in Greek, cosmos, most of the time it's talking about God's society. And it all has to do with the entire history book which we call the Bible. Right? But to many Christians, all history in the Bible doesn't really mean anything. But if you are a nation of people without history, without culture, without the love of your forefathers, you have nothing left. You're just people and trying to work, trying to make money, making kids, that's it, right? So you have to understand this world, this word cosmos, right? Jesus said, and why did he say that? What did he mean by that? Jesus said very clearly, I did not come but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That means he only came for them. Why did he only came for them? Because God has a purpose for them, a special role to play in this world. Right? And if you take that verse out of context, then everything becomes a mess. Now some people reject all these teachings because they have um, black friends or they're married to uh, other people, right? I, I just want to want to say that you have to figure that out. You have to pray to God, right? None of us knew this. They lied to us about everything, right? So you know, even the Canaanite woman and the Canaanites were considered the enemies of God. Right? And Jesus was spreading his gospel to the sheep of Israel. And this Canaanite woman came, and even though Canaanites were considered the enemies of God, she knew who he was. She knew he was the Messiah of Israel, the King of Israel. But she knew that he could do miracles. And he did he gave blessings and she said she humbled herself. Right? And she humbled herself. She says, I know, I know. Right? But even though she was a Canaanite and she humbled herself, Jesus felt compassion and she convinced him to bless her. And Jesus healed her daughter. Right? Also, uh, you know, God even told Cain, you know, if you do well, won't you be accepted? The question is, can these people do well? And as far as I know, there's only a few who can do well right but the message is if you take everything out of context and people don't know who Israel is this whole world is falling apart and that is now exactly what we see now and other peoples who are drawn to Yahweh because of Israel they will eventually also um, go through this tribulation which this universal gospel 
um, promotes, right? And so many Christians say, yeah, but uh, this is not my home anyway, I'm just passing through, who cares what happens to this world, I'm going to be raptured away anyway. And first of all, there's not even a verse, right? It's a song. It's a song. Paul never said, this is not my home, uh, I'm just passing through. He never once said that, right? But Christians growing up in the 70s, 80s, 90s, where everything was relatively still um, normal, even though it was already in motion, this Antichrist system, um, people growing up totally take it for granted that the fact that they grew up in this freedom and this prosperity because of their forefathers and God worked through them and he gave um, them all these blessings. They just they totally take it for granted and they think they're going to be rushed away anyway. Well, what about your children and your grandchildren, right? God told us to be a set apart people, right? Well, at the, at the least it means that your nation must be a majority of the same people, right? But this universal gospel makes no distinction between Jew and Gentile, and that's not even in the Bible. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. That's not an accurate translation. Why did Jesus die? He died to reconcile both houses. The northern kingdom who were divorced, who became lost, he reconciled them and also the remaining Israelites who were still left in Judah. They would become one in Christ. And through these people, God was going to do something. Right? He was going to build his kingdom on earth. Right? And Christians don't understand it. And they don't even see that the universal gospel is now destroying our God-given nations. They don't understand that the blessings of God upon his people won't last forever if you keep walking away. Right? The Christians only think about my personal salvation. Jesus is my Lord, my Savior. It's all me, me, me. I, I, I. Well, the Bible is constantly speaking about us as a people. The body of Christ. Right? So in order to fulfill prophecy, Jesus was going to die for the sins of the cosmos. To reconcile and make Israel whole again. So that all Israel will be saved and enter into this new kingdom. Right? This kingdom on earth. Which is being destroyed right now. But if this kingdom on earth collapses, what they are trying to do now, then the entire world will collapse with it. The whole world will stand or fall on, based on the true Israel. Right? And if you still believe that these Arabs in the Middle East are God's chosen people, you don't understand scripture. Right? A lot of Christians think, well, Old Testament was for the Jews. God did away with the whole thing and he, he came up with something new. Something new, right? All the prophecies, all the promises were made to Israel. That was the promise of God. So God couldn't keep his promise. He failed. So now the gospel had to go to totally different people. They call it dispensationalism. And that is just not true, based on false translations. The Jew and Gentile thing is about the Judeans, where the remaining Israelites were, still kept the law, and the nations, the ethnos, which they translated as Gentiles. But ethnos means a group of the same kind, right? They even used this word ethnos, what they translated as Gentiles, as a flock of animals of the same kind, right? No, a lot of Christians don't even care anymore, right, about the forefathers, what they did, how they died to keep Islam out. Now all the people of God, the people are called by his name. They don't even want God no more. 
and they welcome other gods in, right? Because the universe, the gospel has put a spirit in them that it really doesn't matter no more, right? And this whole message, Jesus loves you, just believe. What should people in Africa believe? It's not their king, their messiah, right? The best they can do is, just like the Canaanite woman did, humble themselves and recognize who true Israel is. Because through these people, God did his work. And if you deny God's people, you deny God as well. You cannot override Israel, the true Israel, and then claim to have a relationship with God. You can't do that, right? And uh, if people want to go to come to God, they have to look upon something that reflects God. And that was kind of supposed, we were supposed to be those ones who reflect God, right? Just like Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. He reflected God perfectly, right? And we are being conformed in that same image. So people know who Yahweh is, right? So this universal gospel, just believe a story and you'll be saved, is nonsense, right? So people, do, people forget always quickly, but when you go to the Philippines or Africa or South America, a few hundred years ago, these people still were hunters gatherers, most of them, right? And now they drive cars, they have civilization, they have governments, right? But they totally don't know where it comes from. They don't recognize the work and hand of God in that, right? When you go now to Manila, I think it's the biggest city in the world, right? And they have modern stuff there. But like, the, I mean, 150, 200 years ago, these people still lived in the Stone Age, right? But if you explain the work of God, what he did through his people, then they call you all kinds of names. Because they want to take away, the, indeed, they want to take away the difference between Jew and Gentile. But of course there is a difference between an Israelite and a non-Israelite. Because the Israelites are called for his purpose, to be the lawgivers. Not Africans, not Chinese people. Otherwise they would have been doing it already after 2000 years and they had never have done anything. It's only very recent that suddenly everyone is equal, right? Spiritual Israel, right? But all, the, all this universe gospel does is um, making people reject the true Israel. The Bible says if you bless Israel, you'll be blessed. And if you curse Israel, you'll be cursed. And the universe gospel teaches other people to curse Israel. Because if you hate white people, you hate the culture white people created, all these things. You are not blessing, you are cursing. Therefore, you are cursing yourself. <laughs> right? So you see uh, many non-Israelites here driving around in BMWs or a nice Chevy. What? Ford pickup truck, 150. Right? But they totally take it for granted. What? Where they come from, they don't have all these things. Right? They don't make Chevys in Africa. Right? They don't make Buicks in uh, Venezuela. Right? Even if you want to go on an airplane. They don't make airplanes in Morocco. Right? Everything God has done, all the development, all the technology, all the civilization that came to God's people that is being taken for granted. Therefore, a lot of people take God for granted. Right? And many of the church still worship those Arabs in the Middle East and those Turkic people who are actually Canaanites and Edomites. But these church pastors, most of them are Freemasons or Jews. And they made a promise a long time ago that they will infiltrate the church and make the church weak. And that's exactly what happened. Because church people don't know who they are. Right? It's so simple. Right? 
I mean, none of these Christians care about the children or grandchildren, right? Your daughter coming home, your granddaughter coming home with a guy called Muhammad, right? They don't care because the universal gospel says that Jesus loves everybody. So you just get millions of Muslims here. You just have to convert them. But they don't want to convert. They are not called, right? A lot of Christians don't understand that when Jesus came, Judah was already multicultural. Right? They converted the Edomites, who were basically descendants of Esau, but he married Canaanites, the enemies of God, and that spirit became most of the Judeans, at least in high places. Right? The king was an Edomite, and he installed Edomite Pharisees and priests, but these were enemies of God. Why do you think Jesus rebuked them all the time? And the same thing is happening now. Right? We have Canaanites. Edomites running our countries and then you wonder why our country is going down the drain so fast where does this whole uh, transgenderism come from this whole drug e uh, epidemic right this antichrist stuff people like to rebuke it and go against it but where does it come from they don't even know right well, there is a group of people who want to install the Noahide laws. That is where it all comes from. Right? The Noahide laws state that God is male and female in one, and that he separated himself in man by making them male and female, but his goal is to make them male, female in one again. The Baphomet. That's where it's coming from. But you worship these people because the Bible translations make you believe that they are God's chosen people. And they're not, right? <coughs> so, a lot of Christians get angry because uh, they, they are in a situation, right? They married uh, a black, white woman marrying uh, a black guy, making half-breed half children. Yeah, they don't like this message. But I just want to tell you, you didn't know that. No one of us know, knew this. Right? God is calling people like me out to reveal the truth. And you cannot reject truth based on your personal situation. Right? Let all men be let God be true and all men a liar. Not the other way around. Right? Isaiah is talking about these pastors as dumb dogs are unable to bark. Right? But if you bark, then uh, Christians get offended, right? Because John 3.16, these loves, uh, God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son, whoever believes, right? So we just get uh, the whole world in our nations and convert them. It won't happen, right? There's only a tiny minority who truly understands God and wants, wants a part of that, wants a part of their blessings. But the majority don't even care, right? The Bible prophesied they will, they will come in and feast off of the children's bread. It's prophecy that's happening. They're in our nations feasting off our prosperity. But at the same time, don't care about our history, don't care about our culture, and don't care about our God who gave this in the first place. Right? So, people think you just go to church every week and you sing songs and if you sing loud enough, God can love you. No, God wants you to seek truth, because that is also a form of worship. And the truth is not always what you want it to be, right? And the children of God, there's going to be a remnant left. The ones who are called to build this kingdom, so the whole world can benefit. But they are becoming less and less, right? God will send a strong delusion. He said, and most Christians are under a strong delusion. And uh, America has uh, had black people through the slavery for a long time. But these Jews in Hollywood made movies to make it seem all cool. They glorified that. So now people in Europe, not all, but some think it's really cool to have black people walking around because it looks like America. Right? It's all Marxist brainwash. Right? I saw it in a video the other day. A Dutch man was walking his dog and he was attacked by a, by a group of these uh, black
black children and uh, it's gonna get worse and worse right but Hollywood tells you now it's cool multicultural right so cool all these movies in, uh, in Los Angeles and, and New York right so cool I'm telling you these places are cesspools right go to Los Angeles look, look up on YouTube Skid Row look what's happening right and New York is just a cesspool you don't want to be there right but this whole Babylonian system which Christians most of the Christians are a part of will collapse it will fall right it will fall it's just a matter can you see it now God said said get out of her my people and most Christians don't want to get out of her right because of these false translations yeah, but uh, I have the King James and King James is the authorized version. Yeah, who do you think who authorized it? Those were Freemasons. King James is a Freemason. And also the other, the German, the Dutch Bible, all authorized by Freemasons, based on bad translations, based on all kinds of bias. Right? So, there is a difference between a Jew and a Gentile. Because a Jew is a Canaanite, and a Gentile is actually a true Israelite. Of course there is a difference. But what Paul was talking about, the son of kingdom of Judah, but the remaining Israelites left there. They still kept the law. The law stripes were divorced, taken away by Assyria, and they were scattered into Europe. And Jesus came to reconcile them. But it was not by going back to the law of Moses. It was by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. That's why there is no difference between these Judeans who still kept the law and the lost tribes who no longer had the law. That is what Paul is talking about. Right? Whew, it's getting warm here in uh, Texas. You know, when you really have a love for the truth, right? Gradually you have to uh, mo do more study on unlearning stuff rather than to learning stuff because you cannot go on YouTube to these big ministries and believe what they say because they're all Freemasons they're all um, or they are deluded and it just keeps spewing out this happy the peppy um, self-improvement possible right God is genie in the bottle right you just want to have prosper prosperity constantly so you constantly pray Right, and uh, when things go a little bad, you don't want to learn from it. You you gonna post on Facebook? Please pray for me. I'm under attack. Right? You know, Jesus died to reconcile the house of Israel because it was in idolatry. It went against God. It was divorced. It needed to be healed again. It need to needed to resurrect again. Right? The prophets said that God will make a new covenant with who? With non-Israelites? No. All the prophets said the same thing. God will make a new covenant with the house of Judah and the house of Israel. House of Judah were the ones left in Judah and Israel were the scattered lost tribes who became the Europeans. Right? That's why Paul wrote to the Europeans. I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren. All our fathers came out of Egypt, were under a cloud, were baptized in Moses. He's telling those folks in Europe that they are of the lost house of Israel. They heard, they believed. That's why the European nations became the only nations in the world who became Christian. And they, they didn't stay in Europe, they went to South Africa, they went to Australia, and they went to North America, but there was always an adversary which we call Satan, right? And these children of that wicked one, they killed the Christ and they still, unto the day, hate the Christ and God's children. So they stole the identity and they want to bring Antichrist doctrines in our society. And we allowed it because we believe false translations, right? Because when the true Christians on the Mayflower came to America you know all these Europeans they started the 13 colonies on the East Coast it was going to be a pure 
Christian society. But it was not long before we accepted the people of the Antichrist among us, the children of that wicked one, because they were very good. They were the money changers, right? And they thought it was economically beneficial to make them a part of our nations. And they rule everything now, right? So, um, yeah, I don't know uh, what more I can say. I made hundreds of videos on YouTube explaining everything very detailed, right? But no matter what situation you're in, many of us are in situations that are not really biblical, right? But these pastors, they lie. They take your money. You know? They want your tithes, and on top of it, they go around with a basket. They sing a few songs, give you a happy feeling, you go back home. And they're all liars. The dumb dogs, unable to bark. Isaiah chapter 56. Look it up, right? And now, beasts of the field. Right. Sarcastically, Isaiah wrote, Beasts of the field, beasts of the forest, come in and devour. It's happening now. Right? And the woman in Revelation, that's Israel. The 12 stars are the 12 tribes of Israel. They're under attack. Right? Revelation is talking about how the flood out of the serpent's mouth will attack the woman. And this is where we are now. There's in, there are millions and millions of immigrants with other gods, with other souls, with other spirits, with other cultures coming in. They don't come in because they worship Yahweh. They don't do that. Right? So, don't spiritualize everything. Don't think, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. It's a very Gnostic idea that this world is, you know, not for us anyway. We fly after heaven. No, God gave us this. It's called our birthright our inheritance and we pass it on to our children but the antichrist has put an immense propaganda against the kingdom of god and christians don't even believe the kingdom of god is here no more they think one day they'll die and they fly after the kingdom of god but it's already right here first of all it's inside of us if you truly have faith in your israelite it's inside of you but if it's inside of you, it also will manifest outwardly. And the people who have the kingdom inside of you, of course they want to build communities and nations, right? Because the promise to Abraham was, from him will come a nation and a multitude of nations, right? These people in the Middle East never had a multitude of nations. They had, you know, only in 1948, they stole that land in the Middle East, called it Israel. But those are not Israelites, right? So, uh, realize who you are. Realize who your father is and what he wants to give you. Don't give it away anymore. Right? Just like Esau. Esau married Canaanite women, right? The enemies of God who worshipped idols. And God told the Israelites specifically, don't intermarry with them. Right? But we're doing the same thing now. Right? Islam is over flooding us now. Other gods. Obama, uh, Obama said, this is no longer a Christian nation. It's now a Buddhist, Islamic, Jewish, Christian, everyone here. But the Bible never says that, that we should create a nation with multiple gods and multiple races. He never said that. Right? So our different races has, have, have been along us now for a few hundred years and it was always good because we controlled this country under God. Now they have taken God away and gradually we are controlled by them. And God warned us, don't let others rule over you. But we believe the false translations and we are letting others rule over us, thinking that you're going to fly off anyway. Right? So think about your children and your grandchildren because black people, Arab people, Turkic people, they may become on the outside westernized right they may speak your language they walk around in your clothes they drive around in your cars but i'm telling you when it really comes down to it they have not the same spirit they're not right why do you think turkic people who live in europe massively start voting for what's happening in turkey arab people too they may speak your language, but when their heart is still in the Middle East, their heart belongs to a God they created called Allah. 
and you're letting them rule your nations, right? So, um, if you're interested, go to my YouTube channel and I explain all these translations, right? Because um, our ethnos, God's society, our world, which Jesus died for, is fallen apart and it's only becoming a remnant at this moment. Yeah? Right, brothers and sisters. God bless.